Hello, I'm Jim Patrick from the Yuma Main Library. From its earliest history, Yuma has been a gateway city for travelers to and from the West Coast. This presentation will focus on a unique group of visitors to early Yuma, the men and women who pass through our city as participants in ultra-long races and other endurance events. These fearless individuals included round-the-world cyclists, transcontinental foot racers, aviators and auto racers, and even long-distance roller skaters. The day after Thomas Allen and William Sachtelben graduated from Washington University in St. Louis, they embarked on a three-year round-the-world adventure on bicycles. By the time the cyclists arrived in Yuma on February 2, 1893, the men had already ridden across Europe and Asia and were on the home stretch to New York. The unprecedented popularity of bicycling in the 1890s was a factor in the growing independence of American women. In the case of round-the-world cyclist Annie Londonderry, it is difficult to separate fact from fiction due to her fantastic stories and relentless self-promotion. What is certain is that her real name was Annie Kupchowski and that she was a 25-year-old mother of three from Boston. On June 27, 1894, Annie Londonderry set off on a 15-month worldwide journey which received much press coverage, including an unflattering story about her experience in Yuma. According to Annie, after her bicycle broke down in the desert, she had to walk 61 miles into Yuma, where a local woman denied Annie a drink of water because she thought the cyclist was a tramp. Between 1908 and 1914, a series of Cactus Derby auto races were staged from Los Angeles to Phoenix. Some of these races followed a northern route that bypassed Yuma, but the 1913 racers stopped in Yuma with the well-known Barney Oldfield holding the lead, which he later relinquished to Olin Davis when his car experienced a broken drive shaft. Road conditions east of Yuma got very rugged, as illustrated in the above photo. In 1929, the International Transcontinental Foot Race began in New York with 199 registered runners. The race, which reporters referred to as the Bunyan Derby, ended in Los Angeles 78 days later, with 19 men completing all 3,554 miles of the contest. Yuma was originally scheduled to be an overnight stop for the runners, as well as a site for the Cross Country Follies vaudeville troupe which was a traveling fundraising component of the event. The Bunyan Derby faced financial problems from the outset. The eventual winner, Johnny Salo, only received $4,000 of the promised $25,000 first prize money. When race promoter C.C. Pyle couldn't reach a financial arrangement with Yuma officials, he decided to have the runners continue on to Algodonas, Mexico. June 10, 1929, which was day 72 of the race, saw the 19 remaining runners begin in Welton, Arizona and finish in Algodonas. Over 40 miles of running in 100 degree heat. The cross country follies were also moved from Yuma to Algodonas. On August 19, 1929, a few months after the Bunyan runners came through Yuma, participants in the Women's Air Derby made a refueling stop here. The Women's Air Derby, which was nicknamed the Powder Puff Derby, is remembered for Amelia Earhart breaking a propeller in a hard landing in Yuma, and also for the tragic death of flyer Marvel Crossan near Welton. In October 1932, pilot James Banning and mechanic Thomas Allen became the first African Americans to make a successful transcontinental flight across the United States. One of their first stops was at the Yuma Airport, where an attendant recognized Banning and gave the flyers a free tank of gas. This was most welcome to the flyers who referred to themselves as the Flying Hobos because of their shaky financial status. Throughout their trip, the men received similar support as their quest gained national attention. Persons who donated money, food, or lodging were asked to sign their names on the wing of James Banning's airplane. Charles Lindbergh's transatlantic flight in May 1927 made him, for a time, the most popular man in America. His aerial goodwill tour of the U.S. later that year did not include a stop in Yuma, but
but he did comply with a request from the Yuma Chamber of Commerce to circle his plane over the city on his way to Tucson. Prior to the 1937 Hindenburg disaster, airships like the Graf Zeppelin were seen as the future of passenger flight. Newspaper mogul William Randolph Hearst financed and publicized the three-week round-the-world flight of the Graf Zeppelin, which passed over Yuma in August 1929 during a rare rainstorm. Edward and Evelyn Dean were a Chicago couple who spent their honeymoon on a roller skating journey to Los Angeles, supposedly in an effort to win a $6,500 wager. The newlyweds, who called themselves the Rolling Stones, had accumulated 36 days of skating when they made their Yuma stop. Seven years later, on November 24, 1936, Norman Skelly and John Shifuga rolled into town on an even more impressive journey from Boston to Los Angeles on skates. The men used 448 roller skate wheels over the course of their 64-day adventure. Victor Wilson falsely claimed to have placed fourth in the marathon race at the 1924 Olympics using the name Brooke Renshaw. The notoriety gained from this outright lie enabled him to make a living by challenging runners throughout the U.S. to long-distance foot races for prize money. Wilson fared well on these endurance contests, but he was less successful at running away from his bigamous marital status. Then, as now, some of the early racers and travelers who passed through Yuma couldn't get out of town quickly enough. But one man who was not in a hurry to get to his destination was Al Capone. When Capone's train rolled through Yuma in August 1934, the notorious crime boss was on his way to the new federal prison on Alcatraz Island. A more recent series of races to Yuma took place not on land or air, but down the Colorado River. The first World Championship Intertube race was held July 15, 1967. Thirty-five entrants raced the 16 miles from the Laguna Dam to the Territorial Prison. Within a few years, the annual float-down race was drawing over a thousand entries, and a float-down parade was soon added to the event. When we reflect back on Yuma's early racers and endurance travelers, we may question their judgment and sanity, but we also marvel at their courage and their incredible drive to achieve seemingly impossible dreams. Fortunately, several excellent books for children and adults will ensure that these early adventurers are not forgotten.